Well, a jambalaya and a crawfish pie and a Philly gumbo. Now I gotta go and dish up some more of that gumbo. Gumbo! It is a beautiful day down here in Manitou Springs. We've got people all over making up the gumbo. You just see these like steaming piles of gumbo just coming out and it smells delicious. When I thought about doing the Louisiana episode, I was so torn. There's so many good things to cook down in Louisiana. The beignets, the gumbo, jambalaya, crawfish boils, crawfish etouffee, so much good stuff. And then I discovered this gumbo competition. It is so cool down here. And it's also, when I say cool, I mean it is cold. It's 12 degrees outside, we got some gumbo boiling away, getting ready to fill our tummies up with some awesome, awesome gumbo. Today we're making up some chicken and spicy and doobie sausage gumbo. It's gonna be delicious. Let's head back into the kitchen and I will show you guys how to make this gumbo. It is gumbo time. Anyone down in Louisiana can tell you that the secret to great gumbo starts in the roux. Before we get to that though, we have some vegetables to chop. So we're gonna start with onion, bell pepper, and celery, which is called the Holy Trinity. After that, I'm gonna chop up some green onion and mince up some garlic that we're gonna need once we start making this gumbo. Before I completely throw you off though, I have to address something. I'm slowly changing up the way these videos are done to make them a little bit more exciting. One of the things is I will not be telling you one cup of this, a tablespoon of that. I do want you guys to be able to recreate these dishes so the recipes will be down in the description below. Back to the gumbo. Next, we need to make our Cajun seasoning, which has salt, garlic powder, paprika, black pepper, onion powder, cayenne, oregano, thyme, and red pepper flakes. All right, let's talk about roux. The base to all gumbo has got to start with the roux. In this case, I'm using equal parts of vegetable oil and flour. The key is to cook this thing down. It's going to start off looking pale, but we want it to be dark. I know this sounds crazy, but it could take 30, 40 minutes to cook this thing down. I'm cooking on about medium heat, but if you're worried about burning it, you can bring the temperature down a little bit. All right, now that we've got our roux nice and cooked down, it's got this nice chocolatey brown color to it, and it's ready to start adding our vegetables. Let's see what we're gonna do next. And most importantly, guys, as I always do, we cook with beer. And today, we are cooking with Avita Brewing's Mardi Gras Bock. It's a nice, light body, easy drinking beer. With this spicy gumbo, it just cleans that palate so nice. It is a fantastic beer. It's one of their seasonals, and you guys got to go try it. Pour that whole thing right in there, deglaze that pot. Let's add some sugar, some Louisiana hot sauce, that homemade Cajun seasoning we made, and dried thyme. Add your chicken stock, diced stewed tomatoes, and your tomato sauce, and stick this thing on the stove. We're gonna simmer it for about an hour. While that's cooking, let's fire up that grill and get our chicken, sausage, and shrimp ready to go. I'm gonna get some more of this Cajun seasoning out and rub down some boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Whoops. Don't forget to put those bay leaves in the gumbo. I love using dark meat, especially in stews and soups. It just retains so much more moisture and doesn't dry out like white meat can. Now that the grill's smoking and the lighting's just right, don't forget your Instagram picture. Once everything's done off the grill, I'm gonna cut up the andouille sausage and the chicken, prepare our shrimp by pulling off the tails and the shells, and setting all that aside for a moment. All right, now it is time to talk okra. People say this is a love it or hate it ingredient, but I really think it has to do with how you cook it. Undercooked, it's just slimy and has this off-putting flavor, but if you simmer it with some baking fat and a little white vinegar, and really cook it down for a long time, it really can make your gumbo something special. The other absolute must-have in a gumbo is gumbo filet, which essentially is just ground sassafras leaves. I put some of it in 45 minutes into simmering the gumbo. Then I add my shrimp, sausage, chicken, and okra. Cook that for about 15 minutes more, and then add a little more gumbo filet right before serving. Give it one more good stir. Make sure you remove all of your bay leaves and serve up that gumbo over a bed of white rice. And since cooking with beer and pairing with beer is the name of the game, let's bust out another bottle of the Mardi Gras Bach from Avita Brewing and sit down and enjoy the fruits of our labor. Unlike some of the stuff I've had on the show before, I have actually had gumbo at least a half dozen times, but I have never cooked it myself. 
It had some serious depth to it, and I really think that's from cooking down that roux. It just gives it this body that's so intense, and the spice you get from the andouille sausage and the cayenne pepper just give you this heat. Then you take a sip of that Mardi Gras Bach, and it is so contrasting to the spicy boldness that it just refreshes your palate, so smooth, gets you ready for another bite. I even did the happy dance! And even though it was 12 degrees in Manitou Springs, Colorado, these people were not complaining about putting a warm bowl of gumbo in their bellies. As always, this was my interpretation of this iconic dish. If you think I represented your state well, give me a like, share with your friends. Can't wait to see you guys next week.